So welcome everyone. Um, I'm from Go Tate, which is in Victoria. It's one of the largest regional TAFEs in Victoria, and we have about five different campuses throughout Victoria. So I'm going to be talking to you today about how we created templates. Now I'm just get this slide happening. Oops. I'm not good without a mouse. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. So we've been using templates for about oh, 18 months and last year I presented um, on using our template and uh, this is sort of an extension from that. When we first started using templates, uh, we had a structure for our teachers so that it was easy for our students to navigate through Moodle. And so when they went from one unit to another, they had that consistency happening. Um, we've further extended that so that we can include some of the features that we have to include um, to make our uh, templates ASQA compliant. ASQA is the governing body for the vet sector. How many people from the vet sector in the room? Oh, excellent. That's really good. So this might prompt you to do something similar. Um, you might get one idea from what we're doing that may help your organisation. So this is how our current template looked. Um, we used the one topic format, so we had tabs across the top. We had a, a banner for each of the different uh, teaching areas and we had the name of the unit. The way we structure our Moodle is that we have for each Moodle course is one unit of competency. And so there might be, say, 26 units that make up a qualification or might be 15 units that make up a qualification. So in some cases there will be clusters, but we recommend no more than three to four units per cluster. Okay. So in the structure we have the unit information, the source information. You'll see we use icons and the icons were developed um, and then we use certain blocks that they're in the template. So this is just the format that we use now then. Um, one of the blocks that we used was the people block. How many people use the people block? Yes? It's fantastic. If you're not using it, you should use it because it is a really, really good teaching tool because you can actually look at um, how many students are inactive at any particular time and then you can actually bulk message those people or send messages individually. It's just a really good tool. So have a look at that one. Uh, we use the network servers block also, which is our gateway to our ePortfolio. Um, and we, a lot of our uh, courses use ePortfolios um, e to reflect on the learning that the students are doing. We use the progress bar. How many people in the room use progress bar? Excellent. Oh, it's so good for your, te uh, for your students and teachers. Uh, for your students, it's a great way to motivate them so they can see where they're at. Um, this progress bar, I believe, is being replaced by the completion progress, but I believe it's still really good. Um, and the beauty for a teacher is they can see all their students and know where they're at. So who's, who's been doing what? Who's inactive? Who do I need to contact to get them motivated? And who do I need to reward because they're really getting into it and give them some feedback? The other ones we use is latest news and administration, which you probably all do. These are our banners. So what we did, we had a working party get together. So it's not just us forcing it down to our teachers what they have to do. We had a working party and the working party was made up of a quality team. Um, because we have to comply to ASPA, I'm bringing that word again and I'll talk about that more in a moment, um, we have to um, maintain quality of our courses and the, what we deliver. So we have a quality team and we also got key teachers involved in a working party to say what worked well, what didn't well, what do we need to put into this template. And one of the feedback from our recent uh, working party was that our banner's too big, it's taking up really valuable real estate, we need to reduce it. So we have done that, so we take on board what our teachers say. We use icons to help the students navigate. The results from the teachers say, oh, it's too, too big, we need to reduce it, so we've done that. So we reduce the icons. So they got the option. All these icons and, that, and banners and that are kept in a, um, a content management system, which is available to the teachers. Oop, go back one. Uh, Arrow keys. Arrow keys. Ah. So about ASQA, 
Uh, ASCARA is the quality, Australian Skills Quality Authority, and it's the national regulator for the VET sector. Now, if you're not in the VET sector, you've probably got something similar. Um, and ASCRA regulates all the courses and the, the training providers to make sure that they are meeting the requirements. So we have to have documentation as part of ASQA for our, each unit that we deliver. We have a unit guide, a unit delivery plan, assessment tool for the learners and one for the assessors, and we have to have a marking guide and feedback form and an assessment mapping document. How many people in the room have something similar? Yes. So all those documents, um, that the teach, teacher has to provide all those documents for the course. So what we've done with this template is trying to not duplicate things. So if you are teaching fully online, that some of those things can actually be in your Moodle. But having the option that if you are still using your paper based, you can put those in your Moodle also. So we've got the two options. Um, one of the elements um, that under the TAFE system is we get, or at Victoria, we are uh, funded by HESC, which is a funding body. And the funding is reliant on when a student starts and when a student finishes and the evidence that um, must meet the same date. So if it doesn't meet the same date, you can lose your funding. And this happened to a lot of tapes, including GoTape, that the evidence, uh, the date that we put into our evidence participation was different from the date the student actually did it. And if it doesn't match, you don't get funding. Um, so it's really important our template incorporate that also. Um, we have a set of guidelines for our teachers, which is in the template, and we did those paper-based so the teachers could print them off and, and use those guidelines. So the guidelines would be things on the naming conventions. So each organisation would have their own guidelines, um, so that's what we use there. And then we had in those guidelines, if you're going to use paper-based, this is what you would do. And if you're going to do electronic, this is what you would do. So you could swap between one or the other. So some things may be paper-based and some things may be electronic. There's a few things that no option. You must use electronic. And those would be location and contact details. Um, the schedule um, could be either. Um, there's checklists. So for each of the assessments being created, uh, the feedback from our teachers, we need something. We need a checklist to make sure we're doing everything right. So we've got those inside the template and the teachers can print them off and have it next to them. So that's available. So this is what our new template looks like. We have the unit information assessment tab. Let's get started. Session one, two, three and four. Learning resources, feedback and teacher resources. You'll see we use the icons. We have electronic book there for the unit guide. And if you don't want to use the electronic book, you delete it and you upload a document. You'll see location and contact details and you'll see there's a schedule and we encourage our teachers to use those. This is the, the electronic book. It would just have the unit information, what the unit is, what the, un the elements are, the prerequisites, the resources required for the unit and other important information. So it's just an electronic book. On the assessment tab, we have instructions to the learner and, um, and about the assessment. So how many assessments they're going to be um, required to do, when do they need to do them by. We have an opportunity for the te teachers to put in either a paper-based assessment tool or a electronic using the assignment and using a marking guide, the advanced marking guide. How many people use the advanced marking guide? Excellent. And if you're doing graded assessment, you can use the rubric. Any, anyone using rubrics? Excellent. Okay, because they can substitute for your feedback form. They're fantastic. Really, really good. Um, down the bottom, we've got a final result. We've uh, created an assessment for final result, and it's not optional for your teachers to do that because we want to use that to feed back into our reporting system. So we've, that's the way we've done it. This is the instructions to the learner about plagiarism and how many assessments. Um, evidence participation. This was so important, and I imagine if anyone else from TAFE would understand how important this is. It's reliant when the student commences the training. Online must show engagement. If you're in a face-to-face -face class, 
and you mark the role, that is engagement and that's accepted. If you're teaching online and your students read the content, that is not engagement, which just doesn't seem fair, does it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a clap here. Um, so it must be, they must do something to engage with the learning. So whether that be they answer some questions in a quiz or a choice, or whether they post into a forum or something. They have to do something. Um, and those dates that, it, that go into the student management system must support the evidence. So that's really important. And non-compliance means not funding. So what we've done is we've got a section called Let's Get Started. And so everything else is blocked off until they've completed Let's Get Started. Because this will be the date that will feed into evidence of participation. Okay? Um, because it's really important for us to have that correct to allow us to survive. Um, so what we do there is put a video or something like there and, and a short quiz. It could be a forum. An example of that could be a video, the Ryzen report, and then answer some questions about that video. Or it could be introduction to e-learning forum, for instance, example here. Um, it asks the question, asks them to answer some information about it. There must be some learning first. It can't be just right in the forum and introduce yourself. That's not engagement. It has to be something that involves learning. The sessions in our template are those who want to deliver per session. Some teachers don't want to do that. They just want to put all their resources in the Moodle and they can in the learner resources. But if they are doing it in a session, they put information about the session and they also have a, a web page there to put the delivery planning and what that covers. And a delivery plan be something like this, what elements being covered in that session. Learners resources, as I mentioned, you can delete it if you don't want it. If you're only going to put all your resources there, then you would maybe delete the sessions. And the teacher resources. So this is hidden from the students, but it's for the teachers. And this is where these documents sit. And it also gives them guides on what needs to be included in here. So everyone has to put their assessment map in there. Really, really important. Everyone must do that. Um, with the new competency base, maybe we won't need to do that. Maybe we could do it in Moodle. So that's something down the track. Uh, delivery plan and all those other forms can be uploaded here or if you are using the electronic um, version, you don't need to. And there is a continuous improvement forum there for teachers to say how the course went. You know, what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to improve for the next time that we deliver this, this unit. That's so important. Um, and the other thing that's included is the, um, the guidelines, as I said, the checklists, as I said, and also a checklist in Moodle to make sure they've done everything they need to do in the complete template. Once that's done and they've got 100% complete, they can then uh, send an, a link to us in the administration side uh, to check it and make it self-enrolled. We do use a Moodle shell for induction and we call it the course hub and all the units that belong to that course are sitting in the induction or course hub and students can click on the link and self-enrol. So that once these uh, courses are set up, the units are set up, and they made self-enrol, the students would be able to access once the teacher gives them the password, of course. Okay, so that's how we're doing it. Um, and that's what it would look like. It would be, you know, nothing for the, teacher, uh, the students to see. So how does it help the learner? I mean, it's going to help um, the GoTafe. It's going to help the teachers, but it also is going to help the learners. And the way it helps the learners... Um, it's easily to move from one unit of competency to another because they're used to what the format is like. So they're not confused because it can be quite daunting when, when you change the whole look and feel of it. Um, teachers can spend more time facilitating and creating a better learning experience because what we're trying to do with this template, we're actually using that let get started, feeding it out through our Jaspersoft reporting system and into our uh, student management system. So we get the evidence of participation. Previously, teachers have to do that. So what we're trying to do is taking some of that administration away from the teachers to give them more time to do what they do best, and that's teach, and to make that experience for the learner much better. Um, the other thing is with all this template is it allows the students at risk to be identified um, easily. 
So, yeah, that's what we're doing. And hopefully you may have got one little thing out of that that will help you develop your Moodle uh, templates. And, yeah, any questions? Yes. Yes. The, okay. Why we, we do, for a, a course, we have a, um, say for instance, Diploma of Nursing has 26 units. So we'll in our category, we'll have Diploma of Nursing and then under that category would have 26 Moodle courses for each of the different units. And the reason that we chose to go that way is that um, it's more flexible for the learners because some learners won't need to do all the units. Um, and it also makes it easier to back up your Moodle too, if you've got lots of users in your Moodle. And we have, for, for instance, with nursing, there's hundreds of unit users. So by having individual units, you can also use your grouping then in your units so you can maintain consistency of what the unit looks like and the, the assessments by using the grouping. So you have different groups coming in that setting the group settings. Yeah, another question? Yeah, certainly. Uh, co-assessing with other teachers. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm on the right track here, but each unit... unit um, so say, for instance, uh, I'll say nursing because it just comes to my mind, uh, has 26 units. So it'll have a code, a unit code, and everything in that unit belongs to that unit code. So once they complete that unit, that forms part of the, the course. Yes? Is that what you mean? Um, inside that unit, we could have multiple teachers teaching it to different groups. Is that what you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, I... Okay, you're talking about clusters, yeah. We can cluster too. So holistic delivery, yes, and there is some cases where we would do, definitely do that. For instance, project management's a good example. Um, in, in that case, we would do holistic and making sure our mapping document really covers how that's done. We do encourage only three to four units per cluster, and previously it was a lot more than that, but we could see a lot of flaws in that. So three or four units, and, and is there an exception to that, we would look at it. Um, or short courses. Short courses we've allowed to go into one course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand yeah, what you mean now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions before I leave the stage? No? Okay, thank you.